If we talk, now 500,000 they go summer us, call them hate speech. But fear not, my ego don't come. Ingo touch light every corner, nooks and cranny of all these bad, bad people where they spoil our country. <laughs> so my people make we love Every corner. Okay, some people be they hala say they want the power. Chai. Them be promised us say we go get light and power. Nah, nah. Them hustle so they so they they can't get the power. Hmm. But now they know they do anything with the power. Sheer. Every day dollar just they get the higher power. Over naira. See them talk say make we off mind. But then go say my ego don't come. So my people make you loud. Oh, yeah, yeah. They do even no one make person talk. Hmm. Them say that my egun, that man do they talk. He do they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepper. But every day, then they take money in buck. One man picking, they the street, they hawk. See them talk, say, make we not talk. But thank God, say, my egun don't come. So my people make you love. Oh, yeah, yeah. My egun don't come. Oh, yeah, yeah. My people make you shout. Oh, yeah, yeah. Day off in my Hello there. Good morning to you, good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are watching from. This is Mayegun Live. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me again. Share the broadcast. Invite your friends. Invite your not so friendly friends. Tell them, Mayegun Tideo. Godfather is in. Another seven hundred million dollars has been given to Kalu to Tifnumbu, and the reason for that loan is to fund girl education in Nigeria, 700 billion naira. Facebook, 
And yes, we like you. Glory to you too. And yes, we like you. Papa, my baby. So, tonight, we are going to review just once more uh, the summary of uh, what happened inside the Chicago court. The, I mean, the place where Carl Lewis fighting or it's like fighting for his life, right? Tonight. Also, Tiflon Busa minister has also come out to say to fund and to fund the Ministry of uh, Humanitarian to fight poverty as they plan. Their government will spend 30%. And mm, you, us, donors, eh, would have to contribute 70% to get uh, almost 200 million Nigerians out of poverty. Thank you. Motideo. So good morning to you, good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are watching from. This is Mayegun live. And I want to ask us uh, to take a moment, mm? just a few seconds, uh, to remember that two innocent men are currently being persecuted by Nigeria. And just like many other Nigerians who are suffering from the same government persecution, but these two men have done nothing wrong. The first one is uh, Mazil Namdekanu. I want to, I want all of us to kind of take a moment and remember this. Okay, no matter how you see him or how you saw him, I want you to remember that for every court appearance that uh, they've managed to pursue their case to judgment, this guy defeated Nigeria. The last one which is over a year ago now, their own court said it should be released. So when you are picking the injustice that you are suffering in the hands of these criminals, remember, you should not share a peek. Don't make it look like when it happens to you, that is when it is wrong. When it happens to others, well, they deserve it. Oloye Sunday Ibo was just like me and you concerned uh, Nigerians, you will say, Abi, when uh, the Fulani terrorist invaded the Yoruba land, kidnapping our own people, raping them, collecting ransom, and to the mercy of uh, these terrorists, the government of Nigeria, especially in Western region, looked away. An SOS that he picked on decided to take the battle to this terrorist, cost him his own uh, freedom it cost his i mean cost him his business it is costing him his family his mother died he did nothing wrong he took nigeria to court inside nigeria defeated the government of nigeria inside nigeria to the point that their own dss came to court to beg and said if uh, oloye sunday was to be compensated as ruled by the court right nigeria was going to go bankrupt now these two injustices eh are not different from whatever injustice you think you are suffering if they are not greater. You've done nothing wrong. They've done nothing wrong. Nigeria came for them. Now, they cannot live the normal life that you currently are living. So I want you to remember that. Because whenever we talk about the injustice, I want you to know that the injustice that uh, Nigeria represents 
has created a lot of uh, dissidents. Today, uh, to those of us who are clamoring and asking that Nigeria should peacefully break so that we can easily handle our different headaches, you know, by our regions. This is not strange. This is not new. This was what uh, our own forebearers signed up for from the world go when Nigeria was going to get uh, independence. But you see the continued failure of these criminals, right? We'll continue to give credence to our own arguments. The argument that Nigeria can never work because you see injustice is not different per se. And most of the time, it is ideal for you not to suffer great injustice before you understand what it simply means especially systemic injustice. Now, because Nigeria represents systemic injustice, everyone is always served, right? Even when they play the religious, the tribal or ethnic card. But when you look around, there is no part of Nigeria that is not marginalized. There is no part of Nigeria that is not suffering from this uh, injustice of maladministration or misadministration or complete uh, leadership failure. No part of Nigeria, no gender, no, uh, what do you call it? No age group. That is not suffering it. But if you think, right, that uh, injustice to this person is deserving, why do you want to you is not deserving? It's going to continue to make it difficult for us to actually have a frontal, one single argument against systemic injustice. Now, as long as the systemic injustice continues, ladies and gentlemen, right, more and more people are going to continue to demand and disintegrate as in, you know, mentally or what have you, they will continue to kind of cut off from Nigeria. The failure of Nigeria gave birth to Mazil Namdekanu. The failure of leadership in Nigeria gave birth to, uh, what do you call it, to Oloye Sondego and the rest of those who are asking to go their peaceful ways now before it turns real bloody or a civil war. And to so many historians, they said, no country survived two civil wars, okay? Nigeria has become the headquarters of injustice to the point that its injustice has actually become law, you know, that people have decided to kind of normalize abnormalities. When people are abusing your constitution, violating your constitution in a way with so much impunity, daring that what can you do? When people become law unto themselves, what, what, what do you think they're going to create? They're going to, they are going to create a divided country whereby a lot of people who are always agree with another option or another alternative to what is currently being offered. What is Nigeria offering? If they ask you, what exactly would you say Nigeria is offering us? Eh? And with the leadership failure that continues to stare us on the face, claiming its victims in millions, generations are being born into poverty. There is no sign of them coming out of it. These guys don't care because they don't want to be responsible for that. Now, as long as this continues, for example, when poverty continues or when poverty grows, crime grows, and when crime grows, right, then you don't have any sort of a uh, development that is going to ever uh, uh, come to you. No development come to an area that is violent, restive. And these criminals are laughing to the banks every now and then cashing out and the rest of that, caring less eh, what their own failure actually means to the rest of us. So every now and then, the system is going to continue, okay, to create more and more Namdikanus, more and more eh, Oloye Sunday Bulls. But when they show face, eh, they would be more violent. Because by then, they would have learned from those who diplomatically, conversationally, were asking that this union is not working. Everybody can see it. Every sort of solutions that uh, have been thrown at it have sort of uh, failed. And there is no way in the world, ladies and gentlemen, that you will give the power to those who created the problem for them to fix the problem. They won't. Number one, they created problem that they never, held, I mean, they have never been held responsible for, right? Which means they've never been punished for them. Rather, they've been rewarded, okay? With even more higher position because they believe that 
they can fix it. Nobody who intentionally created a problem is going to ever intentionally fix it, especially if their career, if their livelihood is built on that problem and failure. That is what Nigeria is. Everything that escalated to what you are having today, a divided country whereby eh, an usurper, eh, somebody you can call an imposter, who rigged himself in an unpopular way and is managed to continue to drive down the root of that illegality, okay? Eh? Breakdown of law and order done by the people that are supposed to uphold the law and order. They will create more Namdekanus. And those ones are not going to be diplomatic because they can see what diplomacy did to them, to Namdekanu. They will see what diplomacy have, has done to Oloye Sunday, Bo. Eh? So they will choose a different path. And that is why everybody who can really easily, genuinely, without all of this, your hypocrisy, political correctness, if they can sit down and just look beyond all the colorations, right? Tribe, religion, ethnic, and other different nonsense that they have managed, okay, to hook a lot of you on. They are like drugs. They've hooked many, many of you. If you can look beyond that, eh, you will realize that these guys don't mean well for Nigeria. Hating and abetting them or hoping or expecting them to actually do it right. When they continue to do it wrong, the injustice that is being served eh, will create more and more and more dissident people who are actually going to go even more kind of a harder on ensuring that that uh, that conversation they never wanted to have that simple conversation of what is nigeria who is a nigerian how do you define that what are the rights of a nigerian right these things are never for any reason clearly stated anywhere Nigeria is a banana republic, a crime scene where criminals are the lord of the manor, where, uh, where lunatics have taken over the asylum. And people have now sort of in fear turned to God to come and save them from the physical, mortal criminals who have all the powers, whether they stole it or what have you. So the injustice to one is injustice to all. As they say, practically means you have to be upright about it, be honest about it. You shouldn't be cherry picking innocent people who have committed no crime, eh? have been denied their liberty, their freedom. And what's created these two men is still happening. And they are going to create more. David Dundeni is now being haunted by the same establishment that despise truth, honesty, sincerity. It is not theirs. They, all they need to do is to hang that, that tag on you. You are committed. They will say you are committing treason. You see that conversation about that Nigeria that they are so scared of having because they believe if they should have a genuine national conversation eh, where there is no gray area, no go area, what have you, in that conversation, a lot of Nigerians, if they are presented with the option of uh, break away from Nigeria or break up Nigeria into the regions or Every other option, or apart from this current Nigeria, it will be surprising that majority of Nigerians would decide something different from the current arrangement. So they don't want to have that conversation. We're a generation that will force us and force all of us, eh? whether you like it or not, that will force everybody to finally say, you know what? You don't do. More will actually talk, more will break this thing up. Anything where they won't do now, more will try them. Because you know why? The failure of these criminals, the further growth of a poverty, corruption that has now become legal, okay? The oppression, the suppression 
that has become the state policy in Nigeria, eh? They will lead everybody to that stage. Create more people that are going to see the picture clearer. There is no one Nigeria. What you have is many Nigerias. Don't wait to be a victim of that injustice before you kindly have uh, before you will kind of uh, come around and agree that this is not working. It won't work. It is the same playbook. I'm sorry that I took more than a minute. I just thought you should take a moment and think about this. Look at the mess that they have created now. Look at what things are now. Look at them still not taking responsibility. Look at them still pointing fingers. The division that has brought Nigeria to this state, eh? Look at them milking it, okay? Yorubas versus Igbo. Igbos versus Fulani. Fulani versus Ausa. Uh, Christians versus Muslims. But when you look at the, uh, the, the basket of their victims, victims of a failed leadership, victims of terrorism, victims of economic jihad, victims of uh, all this uh, underdevelopment, you will see all those people they, that uh, they have turned against themselves. The Igbos, the Aousas, the Fulanis, the Ijaws, the Shekiris, the Tivis, the Yorubas. Eh? You will see everybody in that basket. And at the same time, you will see all of those victims too, holding different uh, weapons, trying to slaughter themselves. And when you look at them and say, why are you almost killing yourselves? They will say, my religion is bigger than his religion. My tribe is superior than his tribe. It's uh, ethnic, uh, this and that. And this is what the criminals are milking, taking our heart of the real goal. Is Nigeria working? Are their own actions showing that Nigeria is still going to recover and work? Is Nigeria one? Are Nigerians united? Do Nigerians have one thing or anything in common per se, other than poverty, uh, corruption? under development, all the old things that we share together. Could you tell me, right, that this is actually a dream. It's not real. The real thing happening eh, will soon come to reality. I mean, make me believe. You will have that conversation. But let us continue fooling our, ourselves. Let us continue being kind of deluding ourselves. Let us all continue to continue to be politically correct. But well, one of these days, the systemic injustice would happen to you. And you will understand how it feels. And just like they say, when they came for, when they came for the socialist, you didn't see anything because I wasn't a socialist. Abi? So when they came for the, uh, the Christians, I mean, let me say, when they came for the Jews, I mean, in fact, let's use Nigeria narrative. When they came for the Shiites, this wasn't my problem because I wasn't Shiite. Abi, eh? When they came for Omoyele Shoure and his revolution now, oh, they deserved it. At least I'm not a revolution now. Then they went for IPOB, Unam Dikanu, and so many other young, 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 young people from Eastern Nigeria that they have killed so far. A lot of you felt like, thank God. I'm actually not an IPOB. I'm not a, I'm not a, an Igbo man. Now they deserve it or whatever, whatever. Abi? Then they left them and they went for the NSAS young, young people who were ask, asking for simple things. Five demand. Stop police brutality on the citizens, okay? Take care of the policemen. Pay them good salaries. Give them good welfare. Give them life insurance. Arm them properly and ensure that those who have committed crime as policemen are punished for their crimes. Do all of these things, and we are fine. What did they do? They slaughtered them as well. Some of you felt like, oh, at least I am not a part of the NSAS. Maybe they deserve it. Abby, right before our very eyes, they brought out their guns. They shot Yoruba men and women in Lagos. They killed them. And some of you felt like, oh, why are they asking for Yoruba nation now? They deserved it. But generally, what some of you are not paying attention to is the economic jihad. The economic jihad is the one where they are not attacking you physically. 
but they are attacking your economic uh, prowess, your spending power. They are making you poorer, even without having to take anything from you today. A lot of you are jobless. A lot of you, your businesses are gone. Abby, so many of you have lost your relationship. Some of you have lost your marriages. Some of you have lost uh, your best. You've lost things. You couldn't tell how you lost them, but look at their policies, how they have now put you in the basket of uh, 145 million extremely poor Nigerians. You can live your fake life. You can live in denial. You can point fingers. You can blame others but yourselves and your decisions or your choices. But the truth of the matter is this. When all the veil, when the lights are off, when everybody goes back to their personal life, you can tell what they have taken from you and what they still plan on taking from you. Maybe your life has not been taken yet. They've taken others' lives. They are not even going to be responsible for that at all. So one of these days, you know what you have lost. And that is called economic jihad. Okay? When you look at those who have suffered this, then you will see APC, you will see PDP, you will see labor, you will see obedient, you will see Christian, you will see Muslim, you will see Northerner, you will see Southerner, you will see Yoruba, you will see Hausa, Fulani, Ijo, Igbo. Everyone is a victim of what these guys have done. You would get there the day you feel it personally more than this. It is called extreme injustice. Others are suffering it today. You probably are those who are one of those Yavuvu sellers. Hailing them on. Arrest them. Kill them. Show them. Put them in jail. But if you pay attention very well, that same jail, they are already managing the asylum. You are, an, uh, you are a member there. Maybe you think eh, the modern day slavery is still in chains and in gates. A lot of people have come to realize that Modern day slavery mm, is no longer about chains and shackles. It is mental. The day you sort of uh, release yourself from that mental slavery and you understand how much damages these guys have done to you, to your children, to their future, and you begin to weigh these options, how much of your lifetime they are taking from you, how much of it eh, they are frittering away, Eh? around that time, you will realize that putting people in jail for halting them or criticizing them will never get you or make you free. You won't be free, especially if you are in that, I mean, under that mental slavery. They can lie to you. You can believe all their lies. But the reality is this. Eh? Once you begin to understand what they are taking from you and you understand what that truly really means to you, Baba, you will be worse than Oloye Sunday, boo. You will fight tooth and nail. Nobody's going to motivate you. Nobody's going to come and fight for you. But it is going to be gradual. You know what they say? Whenever you are living through history, it is always very slow. So that when people talk about this in years to come, they will just write them inside a single book or many books. But the rest of you will live through all of that. Eh? Will believe that it is too slow. Why is it not this? Why are the people not that? Why are they not this? You know, calm down. They are failure. We take us there. Mm -hmm. The breakup of Nigeria is not going to be because I want it. It is not going to be because you want it. All right? It is going to be because this failure eh, is going to lead us there. And you are going to be a champion of it soon. Mind you, the, the Nigeria will not break. It's also not going to be because you don't want it to break. That Nigeria will remain Nigeria for a long time to come. It's also not because I also want it to remain Nigeria. It is the action and the inaction of these irresponsible ruiners that will determine that. 
So ideally, I would choose a day. I mean, I would choose a part that I believe eh, represents true identity. We have never, we were never supposed to be one country. And with this failed and mismanaged, uh, mismanaged their country, that will always give credence to those of us who believe that. And when that bell rings, eh, I would love to be on the path of history of those who choose the real identity, my language, and the people that I share that with. I will call them the people of my own nation, my own country. And whatever is our problems then, let it be our own headache. Whatever is our aspiration then, let it be our own uh, inspiration. Whatever is going to be our goal or whatever it is then, let us be the architect of our own destiny. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Let's go to today's uh, issue. Still talking about the failures, the failures that we always mm, give credence to those of us who believe no matter what you do, no matter what you want or what you wish or to whatever on Nigeria, as long as those criminals who are in charge eh, have made the career out of it, this Nigeria that is not working, to, I mean, for so many of us, right? For the majority of the population, okay? It is not by accident. It is not coincidence. These guys wanted it to be exactly like this. This divided Nigeria, this one that they are promoting divisive uh, tribal uh, rhetorics by the establishment, it is not by accident, okay? It is by design, okay? And because they felt like they have succeeded so far, indeed, eh, let it remain as it is. So it is not by your own genuity. It is not by your own, uh, your, your own uh, wisdom or whatever it is that you think you have for Nigeria that is uh, going to make Nigeria better. No, they don't want it to be better than what it is now. Do you understand? Eh? Right. This guy said... They would make sure that, uh, number one, they said, Nigeria is a mess. They agreed. Okay? They said Nigeria is a mess. And this mess is a financial mess caused by Bokwari. When Bokwari was destroying Nigeria economy, when jobs and businesses were folding up, because these are the things that affect you, that affects, you know, okay, directly. It doesn't matter whether you like uh, the, the, those who are in power or you don't like them. Their policies affect you, including those who also like them, including those who are also supporting them, including those who believe that they will change their lives by changing the country, they will change their lives, open and the rest of that. So, indeed, when Bokwari was reigning and destroying Nigeria, these guys were helping to push propaganda, propaganda that Nigerians should wait. They would eventually reap the bountiful result of uh, those uh, suffering. Uh, they call that sacrifices, but they were not sacrifices. You were stealing from them. You were looting from them. You were putting up uh, pictures as achievement for them. Meanwhile, all of this are not having any direct impact on them. Human capital development is almost uh, zero. I mean, Nigeria lost everything. But the same crook, the same crooked group of criminals who nudged uh, Bokwari on, who were telling you then that you are enemy of Nigeria for not uh, wishing Nigeria well when Bokwari was destroying Nigeria, they turned around and they said, listen, Bokwari actually destroyed Nigeria for real. That the last time Nigeria has real economic growth was uh, pre-2015. This guy said that. So it means that they wasted your lives, ruined your businesses, ruined your everything for eight years. A lot of you were blaming yourselves for everything, blaming devil, blaming the village people, and whoever you could blame at the time. Abby? So they came back to say, well, it wasn't your fault. It was the financial rascality and recklessness of Bokowari and Emefioli that did all of that, right? 
they were just telling you that in 2023. So what are they doing differently? What are they doing differently that you can believe recovery is in the process, I mean, it's in the pipeline? So when you come on Mayegun's diary political and you decide, hmm, you decide to take it uh, a little bit personal because you are either foolish or you are one of them. And when I say one of them, we know that instead of creating a system that is uh, productive and that serves Nigerians, they have created a system, a proxy system, whereby whatever is meant for Nigeria goes into private pockets. Okay? And therefore, it has become this system in a way that has never been beneficial to anybody. When they talk about electricity, eh, they make it look like it is going to be one new discovery that is going to give Nigerians 24 hours electricity. So when they want to talk about uh, better constructed uh, road networks, they make it look like it has to come from one genius thinking or what have you from somewhere before that could be delivered. So they make it so complicated because initially, on paper, you see governments and you see institutions. But behind all of that, they have created proxy system that is acting in place of the supposed legal institutions that are supposed to supervise and see through all of these things and report back as well. So at the end of the day, none of this is uh, beneficial to the direct citizens. Okay? So what are they doing differently? They started lying. They started lying. They started talking about uh, one fake hope. Hope without work is what? It's useless. Abby, is that not what they say? Uh, it says in the Bible, faith. Is it faith without work? Is meaningless. It's useless. If you have a faith that if you grow cassava, eh, they are going to sort of uh, help you to produce gari, fufu, starch, and every other thing from it. So what you have to do is to what? Plant the cassava first. Walk and toil the ground, the land. Eh? Plant the cassava. Clear the, the weed around it. Water it. Ensure that it actually, you walk. So that the day you are going to harvest the cassava, all your dream about having gari, uh, making fufu, or making starch from that cassava can then come true. They are telling people about hope, hope, renewed hope, renewed hope. But their actions are showing renewed shege, renewed shege. They devalued Nigeria currency. Eh? They looted Nigeria crude oil and the money that comes from it. Eh? And then they started promising you hope on education, student loan. Have you seen any constitution of uh, the group of uh, managers or bankers eh, for the student uh, loan bank? Lies. They are giving people hope. Lori on, on mouth. And they want them to believe in it. Meanwhile, their actions eh, are showing that it is renewed shaggy. They made Nigerians believe that it is the right thing to do to remove subsidy. Okay? So as Nigerians know what that, mean, what that actually means to them, 
a lot of them were then expecting the government to also be able to tell them that they understand what it means to remove subsidy. So that communication was not there. It's just gone. So it was Nigerians who are now explaining to themselves. Imagine Nigeria is paying four trillion era, five trillion era for fuel subsidy. Imagine if Nigeria is using that money to construct roads or using that money to fund education. Imagine using that four trillion every year eh, to fund housing. She be, that is so easy, Abi. But whenever the, that same four trillion, which they deliberately created for subsidy money for their friends, for themselves, they never hold the oil marketers. Have you ever heard that Nigeria is owing subsidy money? Have you ever heard that before? Eh? They always make that available. It is their own money that they have created through the back door and they have decided to blackmail the whole country. Your government blackmailing you by saying, if we don't pay this money, you are going to buy fuel at the rate of 1,500 Naira per liter. Your government blackmailing you, the failed government that couldn't manage six refineries in Nigeria, they couldn't build any new one. For the past 24 years, no single refinery is working in Nigeria, but they have never missed subsidy payments, ever. Oil marketers have never protested that government has not paid them or did not pay them subsidy money because they are them, them. So if your government now says, we have removed it, and the Avuvu sellers, propagandists, are coming to you to say, it is a good idea because four trillion can now be used for maintaining your refineries. Four trillion can now be used for education. Four trillion can now be used for transportation. But you know when it is now time for them to use the four trillion for transportation, four trillion for electricity, four trillion. For healthcare, there will be no four trillion to spend on them anymore. But when there is a need for four trillion to be paid to these fraudsters called oil marketers, saboteurs that have ensured that refineries in Nigeria will never work, the governments who are also in bed with that. Imagine a country where your minister of petroleum is your president, and the saboteurs who are now oil marketers are making billions of dollars for selling your own crude oil, refined crude oil, back to your people. But your, mini your president is the Minister of Petroleum. 24 years, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? Eh? It is unfortunate. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Festus, or Chief Festor. Same to you as well, Augustine. Eh? Augustine uh, Eduagaye, uh, thank you uh, for that. Do you understand what I am saying there, right? It is a system they have created that way. All this idea of selling false hope to the people will never change their lives, okay? And no amount of uh, blackmail gaslighting and including eh, incarceration will make false to be truth and will make the truth to be lie. No way. So it's a criminal system in a nutshell. Subsidy removed. Oh, how, what do we do now? People are complaining. Everything is expensive. Oh, okay. Uh, you know what? Let us just uh, give them uh, 80,000 Naira. Okay, where are we going to see the money? Um, 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 let us go and borrow the money. Okay, we need 800 billion Naira so that we can use that to cushion the effect of subsidy remover. 
Oh, oh, we can also give some money to some people, to some state. Let them buy buses too. Oh, that's good. So that will just reduce the price of uh, transportation. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. Where do we get the money from? Let us go and borrow it. So in the course of them going, remember they were borrowing money to pay their friends for subsidy. But it's gone. But they need money now to pay you who are going to suffer the remover, supposedly. Now, when they got the money, oh, hang on, hang on. No, we cannot just give them all of that money. We need 200 billion from that money. Another 100 billion. Another 35 billion for the judges. You see that 200 billion, eh? That one is for those uh, newly elected lawmakers. We need to also give them, because they also, they are homeless, okay? They are mostly, eh? They, they, they are like homeless. So we need to get them that and set it, okay? We need 200 billion. They also need cars. We need uh, uh, 100 billion for that. All right. And the judges too. You know, all the judges, they need money. We need to give them 35 billion dollars. I mean, Naira too. Okay, okay. Then what about the people? Uh, you know, maybe we should just give them rice, okay? Give them rice and uh, maybe for 5,000 Naira. What are we going to do next month? Are we going to be giving? Go and give them this one first and tell them to be hopeful and that they should sacrifice, okay? That one of these days, eh, everything's going to be fine because we are going to use that subsidy money, okay? We're going to use it to build road. We're going to use it to build this and that, blah, 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 blah. Pay people and tell them all of that. That's it. And then everywhere, if they are not breaking somebody's head because of a uh, rice uh, palliative, eh? then they beat somebody's mama, somebody's papa somewhere else. Eh? Or other people are just like, uh, they are just dragging the expired food that they brought to their own local government or what have you. Others who are just staring at those uh, rice, they're like, how do you want us to share this now? which means they never planned anything. So the uproar over 80,000 Naira, that suddenly just put them back and they said, no, don't give them money again. Today, after three months, eh, and then the subsidy they, brought, they told you they removed, then they went behind the scene to go and take $3 billion, $3 billion and they gave it to their friends. Now, their friends, would you have to go to the Central Bank or, or go to the Bureau de Change to get dollars to go and import petrol to Nigeria? They got the, the $3 billion. They have finished the $3 billion now. Now, dollars to Naira. They are now uh, doing a, a relay race. All the jargons, all the nonsense about uh, uh, Naira Kinikon, uh, market uh, forces, uh, about all the nonsense they told you. They've all proven that you are in Shege Pro Max, renewed Shege. It is not renewed hope. Because what they are renewing is the continuation of the fraud and the ruinous regime of APC, Egbekegbe, led by uh, Mumumadu Bokwari. That is exactly the same playbook, the same pattern, the same lies, the same propaganda. So if I sit down here and tell you, you are headed for the same place, would you not agree with me? In one of those ridiculous uh, financial rascality, all right, or financial irresponsibility of Bokwari was when they returned a batch of loot. Listen to this one. They said Swiss, Swiss bank returned a batch of loot. Guess how much a batch of loot was returned that, that period. I'm about to tell you. Eh? $450 million. A batch of loot returned to Nigeria. That same week, Pastor Ruga, Ikene Shatabandu, you know him, eh? I'm talking about Agbowori Baba Oja. Oshimbade, Pastor Ruga, eh, special advisor to Bokowari on burial arrangements, condolences matters. 
and trader money. Pastor Ruga quickly shattered helicopters and he started sharing 10,000 10, naira to those they called market women and they call it they called it trader money abachalut they shared it according to them two weeks after they received abachalut that they shared nigeria was applying for 250 million naira loan from world bank in order to battle malaria I didn't make that up. You can read about it. Two weeks after they shared 450 million, according to them, to poor people in Nigeria, or to traders in Nigeria, they applied for $250 million loan from World Bank in order to fight malaria in Niger Delta region. They were so specific, malaria in Niger Delta region. So they got the money, they got the loan, okay? As well as uh, the interest that comes with the loan. It is part of uh, Nigeria overall debt today that is over $150 billion. So Nigeria currency, Naira, has taken so much heat from these lunatics who believes that what is wrong in printing money? Inflation, uh -huh. inflation is just number. And then they can come around and say, to battle poverty, eh, unemployment is to force, I mean, to first of all, eh, falsify the, the statistics of eh, those who have jobs and those who don't. Then their policy of combating and bringing people out of poverty is to map them down and say, give eh, 10, 10,000 to 12 million households. And by so doing, multiply 12 million by... Eh, by five, you get 60 million. So in their book, once they give 10,000 10, to 12 million household of five, five, I mean of uh, five people, that is 60 million. They have lifted 60 million out of poverty in their book, in their policy. Renewed hope, renewed shege. So in a space of uh, three months, in their effort to try and cover and in order to score something they can at least call an achievement in three months to cover up uh, the financial recklessness of uh, Bokwari, which they haven't even issued an arrest warrant on right now, which is also a pointer to tell you that uh, the, these criminals are going to be worse than Bokwari, and they are just going to use Bokwari's templates to further ruin and divide and break up Nigeria. I'm up for that. It's just that. Uh, it is so expensive. A lot of people are going to die. And they are not going to be killed because of the violence they're killing alone. They're going to die because of this economic jihad of these rogues and criminals. It is the same template. Where is the hope coming from? Seven billion dollars in a space of three months trying to cover the financial recklessness of uh, the immediate past criminals. Eh? Where somebody spent over 60 billion dollar i mean 60 billion naira to launch a logo ordinarily gra ordinary graphic uh, design of an helicopter i mean of a plane i mean sorry or, 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 of a logo and he got away with that and he also managed eh, to boldly say he spent 14 billion naira procuring firefighting trucks and at the same time, we can see all these rogues who are living in their different palaces in Nigeria, outside Nigeria, and yet this is the money that has now become the debt over Nigerians today. Just so you know, when they come around and tell you that they are going to, even if they decide to give you eh, 100,000 Naira every month because of this economic situation that they created, Ladies and gentlemen, with the debt of Nigeria and the population of Nigeria per head, husband and wife, eh? every Nigerian right now is currently hoeing from those who have broken it down, no? plus or minus, see, 407,000 naira. So if you are married, 
your husband, your wife, the husband and wife, 407,000, 407,000, 814,000 Naira, two of you, you are owing. When they share the debt of Nigeria on all of you, each of you is owing 407,000 Naira. And this is just coming from what Sifnumbu has borrowed in three months and what Bukwari did in eight years. Think about your life. Think about your life. Think about your future in such economy, in such country. Think about your children and still think if this is all about your religion or your tribe or your party or whatever class you put yourself, even the rich people, I mean, supposedly those who claim to be rich, they are also under fire right now. A lot of them are currently weighing the options. I sell every of my assets here and just leave this country. Not for me, but for my children. What is it going to be like in five years? What is it going to be like in 10 years? You are losing money even without doing any betting. You are not gambling, but you are shrinking. A lot of you, eh? I mean, I can go on and on and on and on and on and on like that. 407,000 era each. And I'm just being kind of generous. This is just like you, boyfriend and girlfriend, though. If you have your own children, they have already calculated them. Let's say you have uh, three kids. Eh? They are still kids, yo. But with the projection of Nigeria population and the depth of Nigeria, if they decide to start holding everybody, your children are also holding 407,000 Naira. So talk to me. If currently the money they borrowed in the name of Nigeria has put every living Nigeria in debt, including myself, who is here. I know every time I say that to some of us here, they say, Mayegu, stop it. I know they hold any shishi. I know who anybody, any shishi. No count me. I know. Me too, I know who anybody. But I'm just saying, literally. Eh? If they break it down and they use this population, just like now all of us, they share in the mystery of Nigeria. Eh? Now every tribe, every religion, every region, everybody is sharing this poverty. Sharing in this insecurity, sharing in this uh, underdevelopment and bad leadership, everyone is sharing from it. So the basin, everybody they share from arm. Um, I understand the argument of uh, my brothers from the eastern part of Nigeria. It will shock you. Would it shock you or not? That there is no single completed Nigeria project in the entire eastern part of Nigeria. I swear. These are some of the things that they will say when, they are, when you are reading about some hidden facts. Are you following me? If you are reading about some hidden facts, and this fact is just, it's just going to be like, no way. No, no way, no way. That's not possible. <laughs> it will tell you about Nigeria. The fraudulent one Nigeria is no one. You know, and I just mentioned the depth now. Where they say, what is the population of Nigeria? A lot of you who did uh, current affairs, eh? I always kind of follow this. You know a lot. How many states? How many local government? How many tribes? How many languages? How many, can you, how many regions? And all of that stuff. You are so current, Abi. So when I said that if you divide Nigeria debt, Nigeria debt includes the money the government of Nigeria borrowed for projects, as they always claim, to develop Nigeria, every part of Nigeria. But do you know, or would you believe it, eh? like I am telling you right now, that there is no single federal government project, federal government completed project in the eastern part of Nigeria. Let me give you an example of a federal government project, okay, so that you understand what I'm saying. You see that uh, train from Abuja to Kaduna, eh? that is funded by the taxpayers' money. The taxes from every part of Nigeria. Share you guys. Mm -hmm. So when they borrow money to build that train, that rail line, 
Eh? You see that road from uh, Abuja to Kaduna or Shokoto to what do you call it? To Niger or Lagos Ibadan Expressway mm -hmm. or Lagos to Ibadan Railway mm -hmm. or the Lagos Nigeria Seaport. Those are projects that were funded by taxpayers all over Nigeria. Because you know what they do in Nigeria? Eh? They take money, they take taxes from everywhere. They put it in a jar. Inside that jar, eh? they will now start sharing the money according to size of your own region or your state. So the Southern Nigeria contributes over 80% of Nigeria's revenue, Nigeria's taxes. Every penny that the government of Nigeria make, 80% of that come from the Southern Nigeria. But when it comes to the sharing of that resources, that revenue, eh? because of size, the Northern Nigeria is bigger. The Northern Nigeria is like times two of the Southern Nigeria. So by design, and those who have designed the sharing, they have to share according to your size. So Southern Nigeria contributes 80%. Northern Nigeria contributes less than 20%. That's being generous, by the way. But when it comes to sharing, the Northern Nigeria will take 68% of the total money. And Southern Nigeria will take 32% of the total money. This is the sharing formula. And this is the meaning of a uh, one Nigeria. If you stop that, you have broken up Nigeria. Once there is no one sharing, there is no one Nigeria anymore. Do you understand? So this sharing formula, which has left Southern Nigeria sort of, uh, you know, flora, has never actually made the Northern Nigeria richer. It has always been about these uh, rogues and the beneficiaries. But just before I kind of go deeper in that again, let me take a step back and explain to you what this new one simply mean. Just add it to the rest. Okay? So, if you believe that Nigeria is in depth of this size, and every Nigerian holds this. Then, if the people of the Eastern Nigerian says, we know the whole couple, she, she, there is no completed rail, I mean, trail line or train track in Eastern Nigeria. There is no functional uh, seaport in Eastern Nigeria. There is no completed road or federal roads in Eastern Nigeria. They have a popular one that they have been constructing for the past 20 years. It is called the East-West Road. Eh? That name is self-explanatory, Abi. East, Eastern Nigeria. West, Western Nigeria. The super highway that could have been like that of uh, Lagos Ibado Expressway has been under construction for the past 20 years in Eastern Nigeria. So when the people of Eastern Nigeria says, we have been contributing, they have been taking taxes from us, we have been paying our dues like everyone else, if not more. We have become the target of the state, which has targeted our businesses, they've targeted our own economic well-being, but nevertheless, we have never been found wanting with all of this that we are paying to Nigeria, what did we get back? 24 hours electricity, functional rail line, our railways, eh? Super functional federal motorways, eh? No, federal medical centers, 
or standard schools built by the federal government of Nigeria. I mean, like everybody is suffering from this, I'm just saying. Like some of us can still boast of few things they've managed to put in place. In Eastern Nigeria, there is no single, one single completed major federal government of Nigeria's project in Eastern Nigeria. No single one. 24 years of democracy. I'm not asking you, I'm not, please don't ask me who is to blame for that. Okay? So who is to blame for the no electricity in Yoruba land? Who is to blame for the insecurity and all of that, eh? The criminals who are always united. Now you, the shout one Nigeria, and you see the shout say you be Igbo. Now you, they identify as Yoruba, and you see the shout as one Nigeria, deceiving yourself. Now you, they identify as Ausa or Fulani, and shouting one Nigeria, deceiving yourself. Okay? And immediately, this issue of uh, your tribe, your ethnic, your religion, and all of that comes to, you are ready to kill yourselves. You see the criminals who are benefiting from your division. They are from the, they are from the east. They are from the west. They are from the uh, north. They are from everywhere. They are from your religion. They are from everybody's uh, part of uh, Nigeria. They are united all over you. And they are watching you slaughter yourselves. If you do, by the way, one second though. So if the Easterner says, no, we know they hold them anything, no, fine. But let's go back to the, the trajectory that these guys are taking that is not different from uh, that of a TV, uh, book worry. So if you are still kind of open on nonsense, then it is not their photo, not your photo. Do you understand? Like some of you who love to live, uh, live in denial. Some of you who love to kind of uh, poke people and tell them to have a little bit of uh, hope. You cannot hope on fraudsters, liars, especially when you see the pattern. What should have worked on you should have been, like majority of you in Nigeria should be having PTSD. The PTSD you have suffered under Bokwari, the PTSD of you hoping and thinking that maybe people were wrong about Bokwari, and you are hoping that Bokwari will do something different. He will do it different. Maybe something will change until you finally concluded that uh, you have made a mistake of your life for believing that Bokwari meant well. Now, if somebody is now playing the same card with Tifnumbu, shouldn't that give you a PTSD? If somebody is coming back with the same line, accusing you of not being patriotic, accusing you of not, not, not liking Nigeria for not following the same trajectory of lies, shouldn't you be so triggered? Hey, don't, don't tell me that. That was how you told us uh, during Bokwari's time. I was one of those who believe in Bokwari. I was this and that. So don't, don't, don't bring me that nonsense. Don't tell me that I'm, I'm overreacting. Don't tell me that I don't like Nigeria. You said the same thing during Bokwari's time. What, what was the end of that? What happened after that? All of you will claim to love Nigeria. See Nigeria now. Please, 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 please. Eh, Biko? That is the PTSD you should have. You shouldn't be one of those that will then say, eh, eh, bo, bo, but, eh, but, eh, but, eh, what he did in Lagos, show, show, show monkey me. You should have PTSD, you should be triggered. When these criminals begin to blackmail you or gaslight you, you can see the trajectory, you can see the moves. Eh? So don't be deceived enough to say, eh, I just, you know, I'm just thinking that because, eh, eh no, 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 no. You are not learning. And that's not fine. Because you are going to end up like those who waited on Bokwari if you are lucky enough to live long enough to escape what is coming. So many people who were hoping on Bokwari, they didn't leave to regret it. They are dead. If you are lucky to survive it, you're going to have the same, if not worse. So there's no point in... Uh, you know, in you holding on to something that is not real. There's no point in telling yourself that uh, all of the signs, all of these things that you are seeing, they are, they are, you know, they can be remedied at some point. They can't. It's the same actors, same playbook. 
the one that led Nigeria to the most, I mean, to this indebtedness, bankruptcy, poverty, high crime, terrorism. Just take a look and, I mean, don't ignore the, the obvious. Now, maybe when you begin to see the real threat there, what people are saying about resisting and standing up and bringing it to an end, if you don't stop them, they will never stop. So when the citizens are so aware, so self-aware, that they begin to build that courage of resist, common goal, despite all your differences, all our differences, the men you begin to link up and click it together and see that these guys don't mean well. They can buy time forever. But do you have that time? So that's what they have just done now. They have been given another $700 million. And that's the whole, that's kind of a, the beauty of it. A lot of money. Oh my God. $700 billion to fund girl education. 700 billion naira because if you exchange it to 1000 naira to one dollar now eh 700 billion and it is going into the private pocket of these rogues and you are still going to not see you will never see the impact of that 700 billion naira loan for girl education just the same way they claimed to be spending 500 billion naira on uh, sharing it to the poorest of the poorest in Nigeria. Same thing they told you that it's costing them over 45 billion naira every week. 180 billion naira every, I mean, every month to feed the school children in Nigeria. I know some of you have forgotten that. That they claimed that they were spending over 180 billion naira for school feeding program. Eh? These criminals. Here is another 700 for them. And this is the one that is currently public. There are others that are probably in the pipeline. Eh? And they are currently telling themselves that they could put together a package for Tifnumbu. And Tifnumbu will go on a global tour soon. So everywhere he goes, he's going to be begging for debt forgiveness for Nigeria and some African countries. Chinese know they forgive loan. So when Bokwari was taking the China loan, and for so many of you who probably have, have, I mean, have been following that, it got to a point whereby some of the defaulting countries in Africa who took loans from China, they had to forfeit their national asset built with those loans. Okay? So at a point, we believe that rather than for China to forgive Nigeria debts, they will take over all of those uh, infrastructures and every other things that Nigeria used as collateral. Shebokwari that used Nigeria Foreign Reserve as collateral to collect money, the money that we don't know what they did with it, except for the fact that uh, the money was traced to Dangote Refinery at the time. Eh? So how many of Nigeria national assets that China would have to come and take but you see Tifnubu and his gang, they are now putting together an international tour where Tifnubu will be begging all of these uh, creditors, asking them to forgive some of Nigeria debt so that he can say, instead of arresting those who stole Nigeria money, who are now enjoying their resources, put them in jail and take back those resources. Eh? Instead of doing that, they are going to put more, more and more forex together more millions of dollars together and sent ifnumbu on a bambi ala tour 
go abroad with your bowl. Beg them to forgive the debts. Don't worry. Until then, we can start taking some, some small, small loans here and there. Backdoor loans. And they are still piling the whole thing up. And Nigeria and Naira can continue to take the dive. Eh? True, I mean, falling from the cliff. And when Nigeria and Naira falls from the cliff, to those of you who don't understand, although you are not spending dollars in Nigeria, these criminals have ensured that their policies have killed businesses. Small and big businesses are folding up. I am talking about over 18,000 businesses folded up under Bokwari alone. That is a factual statistic, by the way. And that means the figure of over 80 million Nigerians becoming jobless in eight years of Bokwari makes sense. If you lost over 18,000 businesses eh, in eight years, you have lost the chunk of what should have been your source of revenue. Government have no business in business, you know. The only thing government does is to take and take. For government to take more and make more, all they have to do is to make the environment, is to make the whole system conducive for businesses. When businesses are making money and they are expanding, they will be employing. The more people they employ, the more outlets they open, the more taxes government makes. So the richer the society, I mean, the, I mean, the business communities, the richer the government. In eight years, Bokwari's government killed businesses, killed jobs, and then went borrowing. And in that eight years, Nigerians have, I mean, have been going through sorrowing. One sorrowing, I mean, sorrowing after the other. So the same step is what Boe Tifnumbu is taking. Okay? Let's borrow more. Okay? And see if they will forgive us our debt. Let's tell them Nigeria is about to go bankrupt. The rest of West Africa is going to suffer it. We can no longer fund our power uh, generating system anymore. They can't fund. They can't fund your electricity generating plant in Nigeria anymore. Nigerians have they would have to get used to uh, national grid collapsing every now and then. They cannot invest. There is, I mean, there is no way for them getting new investment in your power sector due to the corruption and so much fortune that has been sunk into it. The investors who have been regular there, they know all of this and they know the corruption surrounding it. This same pattern that led to this is still what is still playing out. So if you have no new investor, I'm talking about real investor in your power sector, because of the corruption therein, eh? under Bokwari of eight years, Nigeria national grid collapsed 122 times. At a point, it was a major news. And it got to, I mean, it got to a point, I mean, from the start, it was a major news. Oh my God, national grid collapsed. National grid collapsed. Eh? But it got, people in Nigeria got used to it. That when they now, they no longer put it as headline. They will just put it at the corner of the front pages or at the page of a obituary. They will say Nigeria National Grid collapsed yesterday. So it became a regular thing. What is even collapsing? A country of 200 million people eh? generating less than 10,000 megawatts of electricity, distributing less than 2,000 of the same electricity, 24 years of uh, democracy, tens of billions of dollars investment. It has created nothing, no light, but darkness. Ladies and gentlemen, eh? So, you have the sector that is riddled with uh, enough corruption. So, where is the light coming from? Unfortunately, eh? The borrowing and the borrowing and the sorrowing and all of that, as listed, the playbook is still there. It is still playing out. So, you can easily tell what the end goal is going to be. Take the money. Share the money. Give them the hope. Make them believe that we are doing something. Let them see it as if, yeah, something is going on. When nothing is going on. Abracadabra. The hands of the magician. Eh? The first hand is to distract you. 
The second hand is to prepare what is called the magic. Abracadabra. That's exactly what they are practicing. Anyway, I'll take it a bit further. Yeah, the news. Like, not taking responsibility per se, as they will never do. Okay? So, Nigeria is a place where, like I said earlier, it is how they want Nigeria to be that Nigeria is. Now you, they worry yourself. Eh? That Nigeria is not working. According to them, Nigeria is working perfectly. They share Nigeria as just like a, the spoil of war. They share Nigerians as well as a extra of the spoil of the war. So they share the oil blocks. Okay? They share the land. They share the positions. They share this. They share that. Eh? And Nigerians have no share at all. So, Willie Wiki made the news. And this was when they said they are revoking the lands given to, according to them, some prominent Nigerians. But that won't really sell. Eh? If they didn't say they revoked the land of Peter Obi. But these are the names of the prominent ones of those they removed, I mean, revoked their, what have you. But because of what that generates, kind of, eh, I decided to uh, pick up a clip where, you know, say now, one of the problems, you know, one of uh, the crime of uh, Peter Obi is the fact that he always presents himself eh, as a, a corrupt self, I mean, a corrupt free, selfless individual who had an opportunity eh, like everyone else. And when we say opportunity, opportunity to let your own uh, selfishness and greed take the most part of you. Eh? He had that chance, but he never used it. That seems to be so far-fetched to so many people. And to make it worse, Obi will be bragging and be saying, go and verify. So at a point, eh? I came to a conclusion that apart from the fact that a lot of uh, is critic, they have shown that they hated or they don't like him because of where he come from as an Igbo man. He dared the undearables. He desired what should be forbidden fruit. He wanted to be president of Nigeria, an Igbo man. That is an abomination. Apart from that, I think the way he brags that he stole no penny. If you see any property, if you see any land, if you see any of these, for example, he will tell you, if you see any house that is different from the house I have in my own uh, village, in my states, eh? And the house I have in uh, Onichabi, where did he say he has a house? He said, if you see any land or any house in Abuja, in any part of Nigeria, not even outside Anambra, and they say, this land is Mitaobi land. This house, now Mitaobi get the house when he was governor. This land, they gave the land to him when he was this or that. He said, you should take it. So I came to the conclusion that a lot of those 
who were taking a dig at him, eh? They actually hated him for not being corrupt. I came to that conclusion. Okay? I know others who will say, no, 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 Mayogun Dakpada, stop that. Define corruption. I'm saying, okay, I'm saying the known and popular corruption in Nigeria, the one that automatically hmm, turned the state bank account to your family bank account the moment you become the governor. Eh? The one that says everything you get, land, do, property, do, like you have Tifnumbu in Lagos. Tifnumbu decided to own almost the entire Lagos and the entire Lagosians. All because he was governor. That's the only reason. The government properties that they use government money to buy, renovate, and they call that government a uh, governor's uh, uh, guest house. When Tifnumbu was going, he awarded them to himself. Changed the ownership, the landed properties and all of that, the ones he's going to give to his wife, to those who are commissioners, to those who are this or that, I mean, like regular, those who are judges, he, because he could do that. The ones he will give to his uh, uh, friends, he will give to other people, you know what I mean? Like Because he could do that. In Nigeria, you could do that, even though ethically and morally, why would you do that? Because you are a governor. Abi, so that's the corruption I'm talking about. He happened to be a billionaire who has a business. A business that you can also, in a way, say his business flourished because of uh, his own uh, seat at the table of the elite of Nigeria. But we are not talking about the public service. He said, public service. He was a governor. He had a chance of making billions and stealing them like everyone else so that when you talk about the criminals who were stealing money you will easily mention his name and talk about how many properties his wife has abroad i mean how many how many property himself currently controls elsewhere so he sort of made people so angry when he tells them to go and verify so i decided then i mean i kind of concluded then that a lot of them hated him because is not corrupt but they just don't want to say it so it's easier then you know to come around and say come and hear who it will be the way talk say no get house you know get land for abuja liar where the wiki has just revoked his house i mean it's land in abuja you know that's going to be the headline is is easier breaking news Wiki revokes C of O from Peter Obi. Eh, or, sorry, where the Wiki revokes lands from Peter Obi and others. You don't need to know the others. So Peter Obi said they, they chop uh, they chop uh, from the from the sherry. But that's when I said it's actually like intentional. Or the guy did say something about this, this land somewhere, just for the record. The present governor of Bachi State, the present governor of Bachi State, gave me a land in Abuja. He said it was accident. That's 15 months ago. And I'm the only person who have a land who haven't built it. I said, I told you. I do not need the land in Abuja. I don't want house all over the place. I'm not against us who do it. As long as I don't confuse my interest. So I remember him saying that. So I was like, he did say he didn't. He did, he did actually say they gave him a land in Abuja. He mentioned the person who gave him the land, who is now the governor of Bauchi State. Eh? What is that guy's name again? Mohammed something. Why did I forget the name? 
And he said he told him that I don't need the land. I don't need. I don't want houses anywhere. So in 2023, eh? Wiriwike is revoking the land now. And it is headline in Nigeria. Isn't it? Well, just, that's just for the record. There is also here a summary of what played out inside the courtroom in Chicago, summarized by Symphony. Hmm? And indeed, if you really want to see more on, the, on this, just go to their own YouTube uh, channel on YouTube. Search for Symphony. Eh? You kind of have enough to feed on. But I'm going to use this one. And the credit is theirs, by the way. Watch this. On Tuesday, Judge Jeffrey Gilbert of the United States District Court for the Northern District of Illinois stated that President Bola Tinubu weakened his education privacy rights when he submitted a contentious certificate to run for office in 2022. The judge said the need to confirm the genuineness or otherwise of the certificate Tinubu submitted to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, outweighs Tinubu's personal concerns over its consequences. Opposition leader Atiku Abubakar had sought a subpoena to obtain Bola Tinubu's academic records following several inconsistencies in the submissions Tinubu certified under oath to INEC. But President Bola Tinubu had desperately fought to have his records blocked and inaccessible to Atiku Abubakar. Tinubu pleaded that granting his opponent access to his records would infringe on his privacy rights under the Family Educational and Privacy Rights Act, FERPA, a U.S. law that protects students' academic records. But Judge Gilbert, in his ruling on September 19, said the opposition candidate's election petition in which the records he sought would be used far outweighed Mr. Tinubu's privacy interest because he exposed his records to public scrutiny by submitting a controversial diploma to INEC, knowing the political stakes of other contenders. The judge said the Family Educational and Privacy Rights Act permitted records disclosure if it is necessary to comply with a lawfully issued subpoena or judicial order. Here, the court finds that the applicant's interest in obtaining intervenor's record from Chicago State University outweighs intervenor's privacy rights because intervenor put his diploma at issue by submitting to INEC. Judge Gilbert said in his ruling issued late Tuesday over the case filed on August 2. He said that Iqbal Bubakar's petition was far too crucial to ignore. Meanwhile, rattled by the United States Magistrate Court's order directing Chicago State University to release his academic records to the People's Democratic Party, PDP presidential candidate Abubakar Atiku, President Bola Tinubu on Thursday rushed to file an emergency application with the district court to stall the order's implementation. The jittery President Tinubu contended that a magistrate should only report and recommend to the district judge in such matters. Tinubu further argued that the magistrate court had issued what seemed to be a final order on September 19, demanding immediate compliance starting on September 21. He requested the court to delay effects of the magistrate's order until September 25, 2023, to fully consider its scope and its application of the law to the facts presented. If Chicago State University complies with the magistrate's order prior to this court having an opportunity to review the order, Intervena will suffer prejudice because the information will have been disclosed and effective relief will be impossible. At an emergency hearing on Thursday, a judge of the District Court of Northern Illinois Eastern Division, Nancy Maldonado, agreed to delay an order requiring Chicago State University to provide the academic documents of President Tinubu. The order brings a reprieve to the Chicago State University and Tinubu in their first efforts to convince the court against ordering the release of the requested documents. Ms. Maldonado ordered the lawyers on both sides to file additional arguments by next Thursday, September 28. Mindful of legal deadlines in the Nigerian Supreme Court, Ms. Maldonado said she would rule as quickly as possible after that. I'll have a busy weekend, she said. The former vice president requested four documents from Chicago State University. 
One, an example of a Chicago State University diploma issued to President Tinubu in 1979. Two, Mr. Tinubu's diploma issued in 1979. Three, any example of a Chicago State University diploma that contains the same font, seal, signatures and wordings as contained in Exhibit C to the first Liu Declaration, which purports to be a CSU diploma issued to Mr. Tinubu on or about June 22, 1979. 4. Chicago State University documents certified and produced by Jamar Orr, an Associate General Counsel at CSU at the time. The PDP presidential candidate in the 2023 general election, Atiku Abubakar, had on Tuesday in Nigeria filed an appeal to the Supreme Court seeking to overturn the September 6 judgment of the Justice Haruna Samani-led election petitions court that affirmed Tinubu's victory in the February exercise. The subpoena is expected to help Atiku obtain a certified clarification under which Bola Tinubu was admitted into Chicago State University and the diploma he submitted to INEC, which was purportedly issued in 1979 and signed by Elnora Daniel. But Ms. Daniel only arrived at the Chicago State University in 1998 from Hampton University, 19 years after Tinubu was said to have graduated. The People's Democratic Party, however, views Tinubu's motion as a delay tactic to stall the release of academic records before the Supreme Court begins hearing Atiku's appeal against the September 6 judgment of the Presidential Election Petition Court. It should be now obvious, even to the blind, that Tinubu is hiding something in his records at the Chicago State University and even elsewhere. According to the PDP, it is just a matter of time before Nigerians begin to see the true position of Atiku on the records of Tinubu at the Chicago State On Tuesday, you get a report, a very sound and detailed uh, uh, summary, yeah? So Atiku also added that Nigerians would be so shocked Eh? with what uh, they have found, and they just wanted the Chicago State University to be the one that would be legally in position to release them. So they would then push them to Nigerians and all that. And that's going to be Monday in two days' time. And if you are watching the replay, it's going to be tomorrow. Exactly. I can't wait to see the shock, oh, and I... Can't wait as well to kind of peruse the whole thing once they release them. But why is this so desperate that they shouldn't? And it's going to cost him irreparable damage. And it's asking for the uh, family uh, law and uh, family privacy. She, she call you Madini. Who be, who be call you's family, Gogo? Eh? Who signed the privacy for him when he was a boy? Or who signed that policy, whatever, for him when he was uh, when he entered that uh, Chicago State University? What is he hiding? So many questions, no answers, right? That's what you say. Meanwhile, another person is bragging about his own uh, alma mater. The place is good, where you can meet all those who are like, it's child do this and child do that. As annoying as it may sound to you, for some of you who don't even like his voice, this is one of the reasons why they don't like him. He brags. We are a lot of you who are defending the drug addict, the drug uh, uh, baron, as well as uh, a crooked their past shamelessly. Eh? This guy with a branch somehow, somehow, and they're like, uh, you will never be president of Nigeria. Or more, if that makes you feel better. And you know, I always tell the people, and the country that belongs to us, because the BC and the DBC. They are all my mates here. Yeah. So when I go to the people, when I go to the people, say, I say, don't, don't ask me about my degree. Let me tell you that I was in university. And then you study. And then everybody who comes to the University of Nigeria Soccer, while I was there for four years, I said, didn't you notice know me? Maybe it wasn't the least. <laughs> I went to see the Bishop of Osaka today, the Kali Bishop of Osaka, and I said, I went to his house and I said, I called the name of this, I called the name of this, he said, I said, ah, 
I said, my God, I know every street here, I live in all four. Everybody knows that I took my own heart and I'm in the best. So I know she can stop this thing. Thank you. Mr. Ben, thank you, thank you, thank you. The lecture, I'm sure, the DBC and the VC are meeting with. I've always said the VC. I'm one of those who are protesting when I hear people being given doctorate degree by a very university like this. And as governor, and as the recently, just about two weeks ago, a university insisted they must give me a doctorate degree. And I've always insisted. Today I want to answer that door. I wish for it. <laughs> but there are people, but the times I listen to people, and I say, you might consider them for a doctorate, honorary doctorate degree. You would know what this lecture means to me and all of us who listen to this lecture. You know, in Nigeria, we don't like lecture, we don't like meetings like this. If I ask them, I'm doing wine carrying or burial ceremony and everything, the place will be filled. If it's a political meeting now, the place will be filled. That is the failure of Nigeria. Because we don't listen in what we want to listen to. We listen to faith. Then I thank you. You will know what is done to people like me today. I, you know what I did when you were lecturing? I asked them to find me three of the books, because in your book, I said find three. Because I usually travel to one, keep two in different places, so I can be referring to them. <laughs> then for the input, you have to get out of ethical leadership and failure. And when the country is still failing, we were able to show it clearly. The only thing we have and disagree a bit with him is that it is a failing state. If I listen to you very well, Nigeria is a failing state. <laughs> what qualifies you for a failing state? Number one is the way you are no longer in control of your territory. Nigeria is no longer in control of its territory. I was to live in Nubu City and this morning, I was told that I have to wait to 7 30 to try to speak up because the road is somehow <laughs> by the security agency. I stood here and I was telling them a story that I used to go to from here to a Nubu to in the night to a party. I come back by 3 a.m. So now I'm being told to wait to 7 30. And that is the situation. I left here ago yesterday coming to Enugu. I was told, no, you can't drive that far. You can fly to Lagos and fly to Enugu. And I said, in this territory, they told me that I will kill people in Limba and now they are said, please be going. Whatever we get, we see. It's not part of our country. That is the third thing. The second thing is when you are no longer in control of the economy. So you are no longer in control of this economy. I was telling somebody yesterday who told me about inflation. And I said Nigeria is not calculating the inflation very well. And I don't want to join issues with them. There are no inflation statistics. And it showed that transport over the past one year increased by about three percent. And I said, you see how we have become liars in this context. For one in Chateau Lagos, on a bus, used to be 9,000. Now it's 19,000 something. How can it be 30 percent? And that is nonsense. We have an inflation that is over 50 percent. Same thing goes, nobody knows the rate of exchange today. You wake up in the morning, what you get, the everything. And you ask that question. And that is what is happening here. We have a lot of unemployment that nobody can imagine the level of unemployment in Nigeria. Nobody can measure it today. Except that you are just not 
producing poverty. That's all we're doing. We're now thinking where I was coming from. I told Bishop, I said, Bishop, let me know what the thing that the oil is. People are still not oil, or the illegal mining. The only people who are still oil are the full government. Nobody can. Nobody here can steal oil. Nobody can. To steal oil, you need a sheep. For a sheep to come to our territory, you need to mother approve it. It was not to the person approve And the sheep is not tiny. It's not a canoe. It's not a small boat. It is a sheep that carries several pallets. So it is people in government that are stealing it. For anybody to tell you it is illegal mining, they are saying it's not illegal. I told people, to, they are telling me, they are can I come to Sukkah here? In any community in Sukkah to mine anything illegal in the, without the citizens approving it? They will kill me immediately. So if anybody is doing mining here, it's by approval of Nigeria. Nigeria has turned into a criminal society. Where those who are supposed to be leading it have turned it themselves into criminal. That's why we don't care about anything. So if you ask now, Peter, where did you go to school? He says, oh, it was in Sukha. Where is your result? Which department? He doesn't know. And then the university said, and people said, the university should release it. Then Peter, they will shoot. I said, don't release it. Hey, what's your name? This was one who said, you went to this university. I was in Sukha. I'm a student in Sukha. He doesn't get to let be poor breathe. Don't suffocate them. <laughs> it's like Peter B was like uh, going on and on and on and on on him. And they don't like that. Imagine oh, people hating him for saying Nigeria is a failed country. And then explaining why Nigeria is a failed country. Why Nigeria has become a crime scene. They wanted him to be talking about this country is a great country. We must all work together and ensure that our kiniko kiniko. Let's pray for the government. That's what they wanted him to do. So they don't like him. Eh? A Nigbo man that wants to be president of Nigeria. Eh? Can't they parade himself as somebody we know we know they steal? There's somebody where can they talk as if to say, eh? Is the one that should be condemning the, the past criminals. Here you get, eh? I think there's so much why they don't like him. That's part of them. They didn't want him to keep saying it. They wanted those that would say, man, this country, we need, we do, we need this country to, all of us need to come together. All of us in the call to lie to themselves. They don't like him saying that. They don't like anybody saying that. You know me how they talk and say, Olori Bukula only dying. So me, they don't cancel my name from anybody if he be president in Nigeria. Cancel you, you this one. You know, go be counselor. Me, they don't cancel my name. I can't even be counselor in Nigeria ever. So for somebody who won't be president, to be telling people, they said he hates Nigeria. They said he's spoiling Nigeria name. They said he's, he's, he's demarketing Nigeria. But you see that call, Lou? Eh? Ojo Pagogo. The Bala Blue and Bulu Bla. The Escobar, Totunje Pablo. Eh? The bag man for the heroin traffickers. Lagos landlord. Hmm? That one is better. He's promoting Nigeria. Is selling Nigeria, eh? And the Olori Burukus go. To, they went to America to spend hundred thousand. Hey, have you heard that one? Tifnumbu people they go America. This hunger where they went to Otoboke Yamu and the rest of them, they go deco carry Olosho Olosho in America. Have you heard that? I should have used that as the rider of this broadcast. Tifnumbu and others spent over hundred thousand dollars. Chasing Olosho in New York. There's a news, so it's not Joko. Don't think I'm making it up. Oh. I'm not making it up. Oh. Not just them, Sha. Other people from other places in Africa who went for the United Nations this thing. Since they no see Biden, I know what leader wanted to meet uh, 
Pablo, all of them, all of them, they went to town. People will follow uh, call to America. They started chase Olusho. All of them, Olusho, New York, we collected dollars. Now, dollar, we know the Nigeria, they bring, can't, can't give you so. I don't know if you understand me because I'm very sure there will be Nigerians there who also did the Olusho job with them, collected the money. Or oh, a Nigerian, we did, we did the supply. They said they were going to strip clubs, strip club in, uh, in New York, and they were blowing money on naked women on stage. I wish they, they would give us uh, images. And don't really talk to images may start coming out soon. And they say, ah, that was when they went to New York in, uh, in September. But it's not just them. They said diplomats, other people from other parts of the world. They went into town. They were shopping for Lushu. And the people where they said the image of Nigeria be that. I want Nero, Nero, Jati, Jati. Eh? They don't want you to tell them the truth. They know it. They say, well, all of us know it. Just talk about the solution. When you now say the solution is that uh, anywhere where you see Tifnumbu, eh? Make you arrest him. Hold him. Tie hand, tie his leg, eh? Come carry him, go. Uh, anywhere where you catch him, carry him, go. Or it's a matter of that place. And call others. If you see all of these criminals who are your lawmakers, those ones who are like uh, your governors and all of their uh, commissioners, ministers, and the rest of them, if you see them anywhere, oh yeah, yeah arrest, you want, that's the solution. They say, ah, that's impossible now. You want us to go and die. Actually, why are you asking me for a solution then? Eh? As if to say you don't know the solution. As if to say your solution, asking for a solution is genuine. Eh? You love your oppressors. You love these criminals. You don't want solution. You just want me to stop talking about them. And I know that. Give us solution. All this talk, 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 talk. Baba, nobody glued you to that screen. Except if you have a mental, mental problem. That you can't figure out where you are right now. Confused. You can actually leave the broadcast. You know that. Instead of asking for solution where you no need. What you are interested in is... Just talk, talk, stop talking about them. Let us start praying for them. You cannot pray for criminals. Go and read it. It is right there in the book of life. Chapter 1, uh, verse 1. You cannot pray for criminals. You punish them. You punish criminals. You don't reward criminals. You punish them. That is the first rule of life. In the book of life. Lori Brooke, you, are, you want to pray for those who actually don't wish you well. Do you think somebody eh, who, are, who is, who is uh, in position to give you the best education policy that's going to help millions, including your children, eh, in their life, and that person took the money and decided to go and buy himself private jets, build private uh, mansions, buy different, different expensive automobiles, send his own children abroad for education, Eh? and then decided to come around and say, I am actually for you, I'm doing it for you. Do you think that one is, that, I mean, that one actually likes you? Eh? Do you think he wishes you well? Somebody that is in charge of building the best medical facilities that will actually serve and save lives. The lives of the rich, the lives of the poor. A system that works for everyone. And they decided to use the money to build themselves private mansions, buy properties abroad, private jets here and there. And you think they like you. They don't like you. They hate you. But you don't see it that way. You don't pray for people who hate you. Eh? Go and check everything, even in the Bible. In the past, nobody they pray for people where they come, come kill them. Everybody carry bow and arrow. Women, children, everybody, anything where you feel carry, defend yourself. Not go and pray and pray. Hey, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me in the name of God. Okay, I'll be waiting near any. They are criminals. It is what they do. They take from you. Eh? So there's no point in praying for them. You punish them. You don't reward them. Do you understand? They found a place where they manufacture gun in uh, Shokoto. Maybe for the camera. See a place, so they just discovered that too. I mean, not Shokoto in Kaduna. We are terrorists or people who are manufacturing guns for criminals, and it is a breaking news for them. It's a big thing. I bet it. 
the same weapons they are using to perpetrate terrorism in northern Nigeria are not manufactured in Kaduna? No, they are not. Maybe not these ones. They found the gun manufacturer. Does that place look like a place where they manufacture uh, AK-47 and all those things? The terrorists are using in northern Nigeria, whereby even the Nigerian soldiers who jammed them. When I say jammed, I mean Nigerian soldiers who actually were stationed in a place to provide security. And then the terrorists came in their hundreds, on their bikes, with their guns. Eh? And the Nigerian military started negotiating. We are not coming here. We didn't come here to fight you. We are passing new. We are passing new. Shika Bereni. Mo will start. All of now, where they because you know they wear soldier uniform, they carry guns. Shema will start. Kasari Shuara How many are you? How many are you? Eh? Uh, Twenty. We are like about a three hundred. Mo Kasari Jayin Sin Sin. Hey, Ogbeni, call your officers here. They are blocking our will. Those are terrorists who are telling Nigerian military soldiers. They can call. You know, gonna gonna go to Sabilu. Sabisu. Sabisu. Let them pass. Let them pass. So. But they don't kill you. They go kill you. But they pass you. Nigerian soldiers and terrorists up north, and they just clear them. Three hundred of them, they zoomed off. In eastern Nigeria, where they said that uh, they killed seven uh, uh, military officers, whatever. According to them, they said they killed about six of them. Engaged with uh, criminals who are operating in eastern Nigeria, and when Nigeria military military, what did they do? They came back. They didn't go after the criminals who had guns, who faced and killed them. They went straight into the civilian communities in Imo State. And they started shooting and killing them and burning their properties. To justify why you did you, you know? In Ninja State, 36 soldiers, including one uh, military helicopter, lost, 36 soldiers lost their lives, including one, uh, I mean, plus uh, one uh, military helicopter. Same day. Eh? At the end of the day, they just showed us one, one movie. You remember that video? Where we saw like about hundreds of uh, people inside one forest. And the Nigerian soldiers were interviewing them. They said they have arrested all the terrorists in Niger states. Eh? They have killed 36 soldiers. And we're looking at, how did you arrest these ones? How did you do it? And all that. Remember, that was the last we heard about it. They've killed more after that. But they just didn't make it news, unfortunately. Eh? Now leave on that, Jare, so that we, I can take one or two calls, Abby, and we can call it a night. You have a lot to say too, don't you? The line will be opened in a minute or two. But first thing first, like the broadcast if you haven't. Share it if you haven't already. You can still subscribe onto my channel as well. And at the same time, eh? Use the number on your screen. And you can call in.
Ayekuna wa mo la mo do 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 Ayekuna ya ri Ayekuna wa mo la mo do 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 Sugar, 
mati se yi to ye ti won se omo bade ro o ni fi won ni ro eh tani tani omo maye ko ore ara ilu mama ni mo fo lohun so e ba ki le loto olododo ilu oja ilu mama ni iwo sa ma so ra ko si mo beru mo ta le ri bo ni se kun le kawo mama fi se ra won ni o ti dehun ti mo gbodo si mo be eh e ku obo lo mo ba de ro ta je o gbodo je o ti do ba lori abinu eni ko si mo buya ai si wolu ni eni ke igodi eyin la bara o o ku eni to ba do wa ka mu maye o ti je gbo oje lu e tun ra ki ha maye ku ti je gbo oje lu e tun ra ki o eni ba ti se yi to ya ki won se omo ba de ro ni fi won ni ra o Aye buti be gogo oje du e sura ki Aye buti be gogo oje du e sura ki Sudani ba ti se yi to ye ki won se omo ba de ro o ni fi won ni ran